What's going on everyone? In today's video, let's take everything that we've learned about derivatives and let's apply it to learn um, how to use them in context, okay? So remember that these are the major concepts that we've kind of gone over, right? So we have the product, the power rule, sorry, which is just the shortcut, right? This is the shortcut that we learned on how to take a derivative right, relative to the original definition that we used, okay? So today we'll use the power rule. Remember the product rule, right? This was this formula, f prime g plus g prime f, right, with f prime and g prime being the derivative with respect to x of f in this case and of g in this case. And then we said f and g were the original functions, right? Similarly with the quotient rule. We said that this looked like this, f prime g minus g prime f, all of this divided by g squared, right? And the same thing with f prime and g prime. And we said that it's divided by the original g of x function squared. The chain rule. This was used to assess this, right? The, the, the derivative with respect to x, right, of some f of g of x, right? And we said that the way to approach this one was our conceptual interpretation was, you know, take the derivative, right, of your entire function multiplied by the derivative of just what's on the inside, right? And so the entire thing was your f of g of x and the inside portion is just g of x okay so we'll go over these before we do that i want to cover x, the derivative of an exponential function as well just to complete the circle if you will okay so an exponential right is a is an exponential growth or exponential decay right so we said this is represented by this curve, right? F of x is equal to e to the x, and you might recognize this curve when we were talking about comparing an exponential term to a multiple term, right? And we said that an exponential term is gonna grow a lot bigger, a lot faster than a multiple term, right? With well, a multiple term being something like 2x or 7x or 10x. And so this one, we said it's going to grow really large, right, in terms of growth, really fast. And we said that if you have an exponential in one of your functions, right, and you also have a multiple, that the exponential will most likely dominate that equation. And so by definition, I want to mention here that the derivative with respect to x of the function e to the x, right, is just itself, okay? And this is the last rule that we did not cover in our previous lesson yet, okay? So let's just keep this in mind, and now let's kind of tie all these together, okay? So let's start off with a simple one. If I give you f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x, right? And I want you to find the derivative with respect to x, okay, of this function, right? And then you know that you can write it with the shorthand f prime x. So what does that look like, okay? So let's do it. The derivative of f of x is equal to, right, the derivative with respect to x, and then I will actually write it the same on both sides so that it's consistent, okay? The derivative with respect to f of x, right, is equal to the derivative of this entire right side. So it's going to be the derivative of 2x squared plus 3x. Right? And we said anytime you're taking the derivative of some expression, you're going to end up distributing 
the derivative to every term inside of your expression. So this is the same thing, right, as the derivative with respect to x of that first term, 2x squared, plus the derivative of 3x. And then using our power rule, we know that all we have to do is step one, multiply the exponent times the current coefficient to get our new coefficient. In this case, two times two is four. Our base stays there, right? And we subtract one from the current exponent. Two minus one is one, right? But we know that x to the one is the same thing as x, so I'm gonna leave it. We're gonna add that now to the second term. This, right, same thing. 3x is the same thing as 3x to the one, right? So step one of our shortcut, the exponent multiplied by the current coefficient. So you have one times three, which gives you your new coefficient, three. Your base stays there, but one minus one is zero. And anything raised to the zero is one, okay? So you have three times x to the zero, which is one, so you have three times one, which is just three. So I'm actually going to remove this, okay? And if this is fast, you can, you're always welcome to slow this down, okay? All right, let's do another one. So, Let's do f of x is equal to, let's say I give you this expression, x squared multiplied by 5x plus 5. Now, when you see this function, right, what should stand out to you is that you have two expressions here, right? You have two grouped terms. So you have your x squared, which is your first term, multiplied by your second term, 5x plus 5. When you see this, it should register that, oh, my first term represents, in terms of the formulas that we've gone over, the product rule, right? The first term represents your f of x. The second term represents your g of x, right? And you're going to use this formula here, f prime g plus g prime f. So when I ask for the derivative with respect to x of, and then just so we don't get confused here, let me um, change just the letter, right? I'll just give it a different name. Instead of f, we'll use h, okay? So that you can see it run through. So let's say we want to take the derivative with respect to x, right, of our function h of x, okay? We said that we're going to follow this f prime g plus g prime f, okay? This is the product rule. So if you need to review a bit on that, but all this is saying is the derivative with respect to x, right, of our first term, f of x, times the original g function, which is 5x plus 5, plus the derivative of our second term, right, the g function, 5x plus 5, times the original f function, x squared. So here, you're going to have the derivative with respect to x of x squared, right, multiplied by 5x plus 5, plus, right, and this is the left-hand term, plus the derivative with respect to g of x, which is 5x plus 5, multiplied by your original f term, which is x squared. Okay. Now, all we have to do is simplify this. So, based on the power rule, 2 times 1, right, because there's an invisible coefficient here, because 1x squared is the same thing as x squared. So 2 times 1 is your new coefficient. The base stays, 
subtract one from your exponent, two minus one is just one, and so x to the one is the same thing as just x, so we're gonna leave it. That term is gonna be multiplied by five x plus five, and all that's gonna be added to this term. Same thing here, you're going to distribute your derivative, right, into each term in your expression. So the derivative with respect to x of five x, again, based on the power rule, right, one, because x to the one is the same thing as x. So one times five is your new coefficient. The base stays the same, right? One minus one is actually zero, and x raised to the zero is just one. So here you're actually getting five times one, which is just five. So I'm going to erase that. And then it's going to be five times this term, times x squared. So you ultimately get 10x squared, right? Plus 10x plus 5x squared. And last step, 10x squared plus 5x squared is 15x squared plus 10x, okay? And this is the derivative of the function h of x, right? And just to be clear, we use the product rule. I'll write the product rule over here so it does not interrupt train of thought. Okay. Product rule with, with some um, power rule thrown in. All right. So let's do a different one. Okay. And then I'll label this as well. This was just strictly the power rule. Let's do another example. And so let's do this one. If I gave you a function h of x, okay, and I gave you 3x plus 2, the quantity divided by 5x squared. All right. So now when you look at this function, you're going to realize that, oh, it's a fraction, right? So the top portion of my fraction, that's gonna be my f of x. The bottom part is going to be my g of x. And since it is a fraction, I know I need to use the quotient rule, right? Which turns out to have this formula, f prime g minus g prime f divided by g squared, right? f prime is a derivative with respect to x of f of x, which is 3x plus 2. g prime is the derivative with respect to x of g of x, which is 5x squared. Okay, f, g, and this g down here that's squared is just the original functions, 3x plus 2 and 5x squared. Okay. So now let's plug it in. So the derivative with respect to h, right, and I'm using the shorthand notation now, is f prime g, so the derivative with respect to x of f of x, multiplied by our original g function, right, 5x squared. This is the first term on the left, this term. So now we're going to do minus, right, the derivative with respect to x of g, g of x, which is 5x squared, right, multiplied by your original f, which is 3x plus 2. All of that divided by the original g of x function squared, 5x squared, x squared, squared. All right? And so let's solve this baby out. So again, when you see this, you need to know that you need to distribute your derivative, right, to every term in the expression. Same, not the same thing, okay? Because there's only one thing in here. You're only taking the derivative of 5x squared, and the answer of this entire thing, right, is going to multiply this expression. So don't let that throw you off. Okay, so the derivative with respect to 3x 
power rule, right? 3x is the same thing as 3x to the 1. So 1 is your exponent times 3 is your new coefficient, right? And let's subtract, keep your base there for now. x is the same thing as x to the 1. So when you subtract 1 minus 1, you get x to the 0, and anything raised to the 0 is 1. So here it's 3 times 1, which is just 3. So I'm going to erase this. Okay. And that is going to multiply f of x squared because the derivative of 2 is the derivative of a constant, right? And we know that the derivative of a constant is always 0. So the derivative of 2 is going to go to 0, and that's not going to be there. This is your left-hand side term. We're going to subtract this side now. Power rule, 2 exponent times 5 current coefficient is your new coefficient, 10. Keep your base there. Subtract 1 from the exponent. 2 minus 1 is just 1. So x to the 1 is the same thing as x, so I'm just going to leave it as x. Okay. Multiply this by this expression, 3x plus 2, right? all over. When you square this, remember you need to square all the terms in here. right? So this is going to be the same thing as distributing this exponent onto your 5 as well as onto your x. So this bottom is going to become 25x to the 4th. Okay, because 5 squared, x squared, squared. All right. So let's simplify this out and let's see what we get. 15x squared right? minus this expression, and we want to keep the parentheses because you need to remember to distribute, right? You're going to end up distributing your minus sign into each of these terms. So this becomes 30x squared, because 10x times 3x, plus 10x times 2, which is 20x all over 25x to the fourth. Distribute this, a minus and a plus is minus, a minus and a plus is minus. So this turns out to be 15x squared minus 30x squared minus 20x over 25x to the fourth, and we are almost done. 15x squared minus 30x squared is negative 15 x squared minus 20x, all this over 25x to the fourth, okay? And that ends up being your derivative of your function h of x, right? And I'm sure if you wanted to simplify more, you can always break it down into this first term, negative 15x squared divided by 25x to the fourth minus this term, 20x, over 25x to the fourth because they have a common denominator. So you can break them up and further simplify if you like. And so what I was saying is, just in case, what I was saying is you can also break it down further like this. 25x to the fourth minus 20x over 25x to the fourth, right? Because they both share the same denominator. So all you're doing is breaking it up. And then at this point, you can cancel two x's here. You can cancel, this becomes a two, right? Cancel this x, this becomes a three. And now you're gonna have negative 15 over 25 x squared minus 20 over 25 x to the third. So this would be the more simplified version of this answer. Okay. So this is the most simplified answer. Okay. Sweet. So now, remember, this one was the quotient rule. I have it written up top, but I'll write it down here again. This is the quotient rule, and we also, again, threw in that 
power rule, right? The shortcut, so you don't have to work out that entire um, definition, okay? Unless you're asked to do so. So now let's go over the chain rule, okay? Or let, let's let's start with trig functions, right? Let's start with the trig function derivatives, right? And then we'll work our way into the chain rule. And so for this one, we're going to remember that the derivative with respect to x, right, of sine of x was equal to cosine of x. And if you need a refresher, go ahead and go look back at that material, okay? And then we also said that the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x was equal to negative sine of x. And in a sense, um, remember we were talking about this in context of conceptually thinking about this as the derivative of the sine of whatever is inside is equal to the cosine of whatever is inside. Okay, so since there's an x in here, I keep an x in this term, right? If there was a tree in here, I would keep a tree here. If there's a trash can here, I'll keep the trash can in here, okay? But the thing is, when the inside term, when this x turns into an actual equation, we're gonna see that we need to use the chain rule. And it just changes a little bit, okay? So let's go over that. So let's start again with a simple example. So let's say I wanna give you the derivative, or the function, sorry, two sine x. Okay, two times sine x. So if I ask you to take the derivative of this function f of x, right? Some might look at this and say, hey, like there are there two terms in here that are multiplying together, right? Kind of like we did with the product rule. But the thing is, this is different because, right, as we write out what we're trying to do, we're trying to find the derivative of a function f of x. So we're trying to find the derivative of this entire math equation, this right side, right? And so you're essentially solving this equation. And there's this cool, there's this cool property of derivatives, right? where, and we're gonna box this in a minute as well. If you're taking the derivative with respect to x, right, of a constant, right, a number multiplied by some function, let's call it f of x. What you can do is, you can first take your constant, just the number, okay? And it's, and it's only if it's a number, right? You can take that and you can move it out in front of the derivative so you virtually don't have to deal with it until you have solved your derivative. And so this is what you can do to kind of clean it up, right? So if you're given a constant times a function, in our case, our constant is two, our function is sine of x, and so what we can do here is we can move this two out, okay? And we can do two times the derivative with respect to x of just our function, sine x, right? And we said that we already know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And so this whole thing just ends up being cosine of x. So when you multiply two times cosine of x, the derivative is just two cosine x. Okay, take a second if you need to and pause the video and give it a look if you need, okay? And so let's do it one more time. 
So for example, if I give you a function, right? If I give you the function five cosine x, and I want you to find the derivative with respect to x of f of x, okay? I'm asking you to find the derivative of f of x, the rate of change, right? And so I'm asking you to find this, the entire right side, right? Before you jump into this, just realize that what you have down here looks a lot like this, right? You have a constant, just a lone number, right? We said a constant is like just a number, it's like one two, three, and so on, okay? You can move your constant out front, and that way you can have a better time taking the derivative, right? So now all you have to do is find the derivative cosine of x, and then just multiply that by five. And we know from definition that the derivative of cosine of x is equal to sine of x. So this just ends up being negative sine of x. And I put the parentheses there because it's negative sine of x, not minus sine, okay? So five times negative sine x is negative five sine x, okay? And this is your derivative. So keep this property in mind in terms of keeping track of constants, okay? And I'm gonna write this up here so I can give myself some room on that right-hand side. We can keep this party going, right? So equal to C times derivative to X of F X, okay? And so remember, this is a constant, one, two, et cetera and you're gonna move this out before you do anything. That's how it got here. So let me erase this. Okay. And so I want to clarify what I mean by what you can move out in front, okay? So I'm gonna do an example that might throw you for a loop if, if you're not prepared, okay? So let's do it put a line just for organization, right? So, I wanna give you a similar function. F of X is equal to two X sine of X, okay? This function looks slightly similar to this function. Two sine X, two X, sine x, okay? Subtle differences, big difference in the way that you um, evaluate this, okay? When you look at this, I need you to remember to identify constants before you jump into this stuff that you can remove to kind of simplify your process, okay? So again, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of this function. And so let's do it. Taking the derivative with respect to x of f of x. And showing your work like this will help you a lot, right? And just mapping out your ideas. So for um, just for clarity in your mind, you know, having ample space. We're finding the derivative of f of x, which means we're finding the derivative of this entire right side. That's what we have here. Now, two, right? The difference between two sine x and two x sine x is that we are taking the derivative with respect to x, right? So this little buddy is a variable, um, is a variable of choice for us, right? Like this is a variable that we are interested in. This is a variable that we are interested in, right? But the thing is, the two out in front of this whole thing, 
this is still a coefficient, okay? So being able to see this, you can take this constant, just the two, and move it out front, okay? So what does that look like? Now, and I'm gonna clean this up. You can take this constant, move it out front, and you're just gonna end up multiplying this constant by the derivative, right? Whatever you get for the derivative there. So now you have two times the derivative with respect to x of x sine x, okay? This is what you have in terms of a simplified derivative, okay? Now, when you look at this, this looks a lot like this, the derivative, right? Of some function f of x multiplied by some function g of x. And I'm gonna use square brackets just so you can see it there, okay? The derivative of some function f of x, in this case, that's our x, multiplied by some function g of x, that's sine of x, right? x, sine of x, sorry about that. This is where we said we would use the, and that, there we go, product rule, all right? And that looks like this, f prime g, the derivative of f of x times the original g function, plus g prime f, the derivative with respect to g of x, the original f of x. So when you do this, we're gonna drop the product rule on here. And let's work it out. So you're gonna have two, right? Your constant stays there multiplied by whatever this answer is gonna be. So f prime, derivative of, and I'll actually write the terms in here. The derivative of our f of x, which in this case is just x, multiplied by our original g of x, in this case, just sine of x that this term added to g prime, which is the derivative with respect to x of sine of x, right? Multiplied by the original f of x function. So multiplied by x, right? And this is what you have for this side. So let's solve these out. Using the power rule, x is the same thing as, that stays the same. x is the same thing as x to the one, right? Also, one x is the same thing as x. So technically your coefficient here is one, it's invisible. Your exponent here is also one, it's invisible. So exponent one times your current coefficient one, one times one is just one. That's going to be your new coefficient, right? Keep your base there. Subtract one from the exponent. One minus one is zero. Anything raised to the zero is just one. So in turn, you have one times one, which is just one. So I'm gonna take this out, okay? One times sine of x. Somebody get a one channel down. Okay, I'm gonna add this to the derivative of sine of x by definition. That's just cosine of x. Cosine of x times x. Okay. And all you gotta do is simplify this puppy out. So you're gonna have two times sine of x because one times sine of x is just sine of x plus x times cosine of x, which is just x cosine x. Right? And then just go ahead and distribute this two back in, right? Two sine x plus two x cosine of x. This is your 
derivative, okay? I'm gonna separate this, I should have separated this at the end. But this example highlighted one, right? Don't just blindly jump into your functions, actually take a couple milliseconds and try to identify what parts are where, right? In terms of when, when I was, when you were given two X sine X, you were able to say, hey, two is just a number. That is a constant, right? So based on this rule, I can just move that out, right? Like so, and just multiply that by whatever I get from the derivative of my function, okay? And that's what we did here. We moved the two out, and you ended up being left with two times the derivative of the stuff that mattered, x sine x. When you got to this step, you said, hey, this looks like the derivative, right, of some term f of x, which was just x, multiplied by some term g of x, which was sine x. And you know that when I have this format, I need to use the product rule. Okay? And the product rule is defined as the derivative with respect to x of f of x, right? That's what f prime is, times the original g, plus the derivative with respect to x of g of x, that's g prime, times the original f. Okay? And that's how we evaluated this, right? And this whole time you keep this constant, keep this constant in mind don't forget about it because at this very end this last step right this was your derivative that you calculated using the product rule the last step was redistributing that two that constant back into each year terms okay and so if we're good with this if you need more time definitely go back and check it out just slow the video down if you need um, if not Let's go on to um, the chain rule, okay? And so, for the chain rule, I'm gonna use um, the trig functions because it's gonna be the easiest to, to highlight what I'm trying to get across, okay? So, if I give you, we all know, again, right, that the function, sine of x has a derivative, right, of cosine of x. Okay, we know this. Previously, we also have experience with the power rule, right, the shortcut. So we know how to move about when we're given some function, say call some function g of x, and let's say that's 2x plus 3, right? You guys have seen this at this point a couple of times. And we know that when we're finding the derivative, right, with respect to x of g of x, that's gonna be the same thing as the derivative of this entire right side, right? And we know that when you have something in this form, you need to distribute your derivative to every term in that expression. And so you're gonna end up right, if you simplify, is just the derivative of the first term plus the derivative of the second term, right? And you can evaluate these separately, then just add them up. And we know that the derivative of a number or a constant, right, is always gonna be zero. And here, we can use the power rule. Two x is the same thing as two x raised to the one, Right, so you have an invisible one here. Your exponent one times your current base, or sorry, about that other. Your current exponent, which is one, times your current coefficient, one times two, is your new coefficient, two. Keep my base there. Subtract one from your exponent. You had one minus one, which is zero. Anything raised to the zero power is one. So x to the zero, is one, so essentially here you have two times one, which is just two, so I'm gonna delete this, okay? 
And so this ends up being your derivative, right? Here and here. And so we've gotten pretty comfortable um, with these types of derivations, okay? So now let's go over, and I'm gonna put a box here, something called the chain rule. And basically, you're gonna use the chain rule when we start to combine, right, the different concepts that we learned together, okay? And at first glance, it might look kind of different, but just, we'll go over it. So, for the chain rule, technically, it's the derivative with respect to x, right, of some function f of g of x and I spaced this out just so you can see it, okay? But they're right next to each other in, in real life, okay? And what this means is the derivative of your function f of x, right? Evaluated at some value g of x, okay? So what I'm trying to say here is that, remember when I give you f of x is equal to x squared, right? This is the parabola that we've worked with before. And so if I told you to evaluate the parabola function at x is equal to two, right? All you would do is you would come down here and you would say evaluate x at two, right? Which is the same thing as evaluating the function at two. And wherever you see x in your math equation, you would plug in two. So here you have two squared, which is just four, right? And you would do a similar thing if I wanted you to evaluate this at x is equal to three. You would evaluate x is equal to three instead, which is the same thing as f, the function at three. And then wherever you see a th an x in your math equation, instead of two, you just plug in three, which would be three squared, which would be nine, right? Similar concept here. When I say that, and let's just move up here for some, there we go. And then I'll erase this, because that line was, didn't mean it. So, let's say I have a function f of x, right? Which is sine of x from here, okay? And you're also given g of x is equal to what, 2x plus three, plus three. F of g of x, right? We said that just means your f of x function, sine of x, right? Evaluated at x being equal to your function g of x. Okay, and what this looks like is this. Your f of x function is sine, right? Sine of x, and you're evaluating x at g of x, so at g of x. Okay, and so let's just call this function h of x, all right? as we did before so we can see the parts. Okay. So this is your f of g of x function, all right? And so when you want to evaluate this derivative now, derivative with respect to x of h of x, right? We're trying to find the derivative of this entire right side of sine of 2x plus 3, okay? And feel free to pause if you need um, a couple seconds, all right? Totally fine. When I'm trying to find this derivative, okay? Conceptually, an easy way to think about this is this is gonna be equal to the derivative of my entire function Right? 
my entire function multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of what's on the inside. I got ahead of myself. What's on the inside. And we'll tell you what this means. So when I talk about the derivative of the entire function, right, in our case, what I'm saying is we know that the derivative with respect to x of the function sine of whatever is inside is equal to the cosine of whatever is inside, right? Now in here, 2x plus 3, it's a little bit different from just having x. Because, and we're going to go into just showing you why, right? We take this to be true, and I just want to show you why. The same concept that we are going to apply here is the same reason why you can trust this definition and the, the couple other ones that we went over, right? It's because it follows this. The derivative of sine, right, of x, or sorry, the derivative of the sine of whatever is inside is equal to cosine of whatever is inside. But you also need to consider the derivative of the terms that you include inside. Okay? So what I'm saying is the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is actually the same thing that we have here, right? It's going to be the derivative of sine of whatever we have, the entire thing, right? This is the entire thing multiplied by the derivative of x of just what's on the inside, right? This thing only has x on the inside. And this is. So when you work out these derivatives, right, the derivative of sine of whatever is equal to cosine of whatever. And this is definitely conceptual language, right? And I just want to keep it as simple as possible. Now, the derivative of x for my power rule, right? We know that x is the same thing as 1x. We also know that x is the same thing as 1x to the 1, right? And so, in this case, they're silent. But the coefficient here is 1. Exponent here is 1. The power rule says exponent 1 times your current coefficient 1 is your new coefficient. Keep your base there. Subtract 1 from your exponent. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything raised to the 0 is just 1. Okay. And so in this case, 1 times your new, co your new coefficient, 1 times x to the 0, which is 1, is just 1. So I'm going to erase this. And when you simplify this, this is why. Right? The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. All right. So this was just to give you some context. I thought it would be kind of neat to see this stuff in action. Okay. So I'm going to minimize. Uh, I'm just going to move this then. Oh, that's. Sorry about that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So that can be a really big aside, and so you can consider this later if you want. And let's get back to what we were originally doing. And so based on what we did here, I think that was a cool side trick. Um, we're going to apply the same thing here. All right. The derivative of sine of the stuff inside, 2x plus 3, right, is uh, what we're trying to do. And so we're going to use the chain rule. Chain rule. And we're going to follow this formula right here. The derivative of the entire thing, which is going to be the derivative of sine of whatever is inside, right? 
multiplied by multiplied by the derivative of just what's inside. So that's going to be two x plus three. Okay, and so derivative of sine of something is equal to the cosine of that something multiplied by right what you've done a thousand times before. Distribute the derivative of each term, right? Derivative of a constant is zero. Derivative of two x using the power rule. Two x is the same thing as two x to the one, right? So exponent times current coefficient. One times two is your new coefficient. Leave that base there. Subtract one from your exponent. This is x to the one. One minus one is zero. Anything raised to zero is just one. So two times one is two. So I shall take this away, and we're going to multiply these together okay, for your final answer. All right, and that's your derivative for h prime x. Okay, if you need a second, definitely grab one. Okay, I'll give it a second to kind of sink in a bit. And so, let me give you an example to do yourself, and then we will go over it together after. Okay. So, if I give you the function cosine of 10x plus 3, all right? Let's do that one. Find the derivative with respect to x of this function. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. And we'll get back together in a minute and go over it. Okay, awesome. Let's see what we got. All right. So again, we have this construct, right, in our function of taking the derivative but to x of some f of g of x form. Right, and we say conceptually, you can think of this as the derivative with respect to x of your entire function, right? Multiplied by the derivative but to x of just whatever is on the inside, okay? And so let's use this. So in this case, the derivative of cosine, right, and this is going to be like the, the notes over here. We know that the derivative right, to x of cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. And you can use the um, you can actually use the chain rule, right, to prove this to yourself, just like we did uh, with the derivative of sine, okay? And so we know that the derivative of the entire thing, we'll talk about the derivative of just what's on the inside, right? The derivative of cosine to the stuff on the inside is just going to be negative sine right, of this stuff on the inside. That's your first term. Multiply that by the derivative of 10x plus 3, right, just this stuff. And again, distribute your derivative. Derivative of the constant is 0. Derivative of 10x is going to, you're going to use your power rule. 10x, the same as 10x to the 1. Exponent 1 times the current coefficient, right? I see you writing this stuff out. Wait a second. 10x to the 1. Exponent 1 times your current coefficient is new coefficient. Keep your base there. 
subtract one from your exponent, one minus one is zero. And you notice that zero is one. So essentially you have 10 times x to the zero or 10 times one. x to the 10, so I'm going to erase this. Okay, after that, all you gotta do is simplify. 10 times negative sine of 10x plus three, so it's gonna be negative 10 sine 10x plus three, okay? This is your derivative. Okay. And remember for these, we were using the chain rule. Okay. And so if you got this, if you're, if you're keeping up so far, then good job. If you're still slightly unsure, that's totally fine. Um, just go back. If you need to, um, you can go back to those other uh, discussions we had about these topics and then come back here and try to work out these problems for yourself. Okay? Before we go, when we first started, we were talking about the exponential function, right? And I kind of want to end on that. And so in terms of the exponential function, another color box here. In terms of our exponential function, Right, represented by f of x is equal to e to the x. That looks, sorry about that. That looks like this, right? So you have x, you have f of x. This curve represents f of x is equal to e to the x. And we said that the exponential growth, right, grows really large, really fast, and it will dominate in an equation when compared to a multiple, right? And we also said that the derivative with respect to x of e to the x is just e to the x. This is another definition that we know and that we trust, okay? And what we did to prove that the derivative of sine of x, right, is equal to cosine of x, what we did here, we can prove the same thing for the exponent, okay, the exponential. Because the derivative of e to the x is actually the same formula that we've been using this whole time. The derivative of the entire function, right, multiplied by the derivative of what's on the inside. And so in this case, we know that the derivative of e raised to the whatever, right, is gonna be equal to e raised to the whatever. It has to stay the same, e raised to the whatever. But using the chain rule, that has to be multiplied by the derivative of the stuff on the inside. In this case, the exponent. So in this case, it's just x. And we know that the derivative the derivative of x is just one because there's a one invisible coefficient, there's a one invisible um, exponent. So exponent times current coefficient, one times one is just going to be one, right? Base stays, subtract one from your exponent, one minus one is zero. X raised to the zero is just one. So one times one is one. So this all ends up being e to the x multiplied by 1, which is just e to the x. And this is why we trust this definition, right? So let's have a reshape party here, just like we did over there. And let's see if it actually works. Oh, we're moving. Cool. Awesome. And I shall box this as well. All right, so as our last example, let's say I give you the function. It's getting epic in here. Two, that's not a two, that's an e. E raised to the two x, okay? E raised to the two x. And I want you to find the derivative with respect to x of f of x, okay? So give this a try 
looking at what we just did over here, and we'll get back together in a couple seconds. All right. So go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. Sweet. Let's see if our answers agree. Okay. We said that we know that the derivative of e raised to some stuff is equal to e raised to that same stuff. Okay? And we said that when we're dealing with this, we're going to use the chain rule, which says that when we evaluate the derivative with respect to x, right, of our function, we are evaluating the, the derivative with respect to x of this entire right hand side. We need to think about it in terms of the derivative with respect to x, right, of the entire function multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of just what's on the inside. So in this case, the stuff in the exponent up here. Okay. So by definition, the derivative of e to the stuff, in this case, stuff is, is 2x. Okay. The derivative of e to the stuff is still going to be e to the stuff. So this thing is going to be e to the 2x. But you need to multiply this by the derivative of just the stuff, right? The inside. So this is the derivative with respect to x of 2x. And we know from the power rule, 2x is the same thing as 2x raised to the 1. So exponent 1 times your current coefficient. 2 is your new coefficient. Right? So I'm going to give you 2. Base stays there. Subtract 1 from your exponent. 1 minus 1 is 0. x to the 0 is just 1. So 2 times 1 is just 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase this, and you're ultimately going to multiply e to the 2x times 2. And that shall give you 2e to the 2x, which ends up being your final derivative. Okay? So, if you were able to follow all this, then good job. It was a lot of material, okay? Um, if not, feel free to go back and just figure out whichever parts um, that you don't understand. And if you have questions or comments, just put them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay? So good job. And also the other lessons are available to you. So if there are concepts, and let me go back to the first page, right? If any of these concepts are shaky for you, right? Then uh, except the exponential. We just we basically just went over the exponential stuff in this video. But if any of these right, uh, concepts seem a little difficult for you, feel free to go through those lessons and we have examples in there as well. Okay? So 